when we had a look at the film industry we found that you know while the big ones are making big money but there is huge amount of content that is not finding its place or i would say they do find place on youtube but they are not able to monetize it so anybody who is creating the content needs to earn out of it that's what we found out and that's how this idea you know started taking shape hello everyone today my guest is shalit badrashar the ceo and co-founder of abc talkies it's an online movie platform for filmmakers to submit their films and for cinema lovers to watch independent cinema on a pay-per-view model. So away in this episode, he talks about what motivated him to get this off the ground. He talks about what problem they're solving. He talks about the business model and the revenue streams, including variable ticket pricing. Talks about being blessed with failure in the early days and keeping the faith. And finally, he talks about his time spent working with Prime Minister Modi, sharing some interesting tales and insights and much, much more. So please enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello, Charlie Badra. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me, Neil. Excited to speak to you today. Uh, please tell the listeners what you're building. So we are basically building the, uh, we call it the first digital streaming infrastructure for filmmakers. What motivated you to do this? When we had a look at the film industry, uh, we found that, you know, while the big ones are making big money, but there is huge amount of content that is not finding its place or I would say they do find place on YouTube, but they are not able to monetize it. So anybody who's creating the content needs to earn out of it. Simply didn't have a place to go. That's what we found out. And that's how this idea, you know, started taking shape. Awesome stuff. And when did you start and, you know, how are things going? Um, can you share some stats like movies, uh, how many users, how many downloads, etc.? Sure. So we, uh, the idea cropped up during the COVID times while everybody was sitting at home. Mm-hmm. And post-COVID is when we started working with it. The uh, the simple idea was that, you know, there are so many films and uh, they don't find a place to earn money. So why don't we provide them a platform where they can come and stream it and they can, you know, make money out of it. Mm-hmm. So that was the idea where we started off. And somewhere in June 2020 is when we started giving shape to, you know, putting the company together, bringing along the people and everything. Uh, so when I came into the picture, I was more like a consultant to my co-founder. And in about four or five months, we built up the platform. And somewhere in October 2020 is when we first went to the market. Okay. Trying to sell our idea to different people. Everybody liked the idea. But that's where the learning came in that what we had done was simply not enough for the market. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went back to the drawing board, scrapped everything, Mm -hmm. you know, started from the scratch. And then formally we did the beta launch in uh, Fab 2021. And it's been around 12, 13 months now, 13, 14 months that uh, we've been gradually building up things. Mm -hmm. so that's that's how it's been so far. And are, are, are you happy with the progress? Is, you know, is, is is this what you expected? Yeah. So uh, if you look at it, our our entire platform is where we are saying the filmmaker that you come, you fix your price, and you earn your money. You know. So it's basically a TBOD, what we call it, or a pay per view kind of a platform. And looking at India, it's a behavioral change that you are trying to usher in that you know you pay for what you want to watch if it's a you know quality content and uh, you don't pay you know a monthly commitment or something you're not bound by anything just whatever you're watching you are paying and you're free mm-hmm. you, you're not committed to anything mm-hmm. but that kind of a behavioral change is a time consuming process so we know that and we understand it and it's gradually catching up now and we are happy i mean say we did not expect success overnight uh, when we started or because we knew we were doing something different and uh, it's going to take time for people to accept it, for it to grow, for, you know, filmmakers to have confidence that, okay, they will earn money from this. Mm. Uh, so, so it's, it's catching up. So, mm. uh, the journey has had its own ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but off late, we are now actually starting to see, uh, you know, reasonably good traction. Mm-hmm. So I'm a filmmaker. I upload my movie to your website. Yes. Someone, someone buys a ticket or someone downloads it. 
do I take most, you know, hundred percent of the revenue? Was it eighty percent of the revenue? Is it a revenue sharing system? What, what's what's the particular business model for the? Also, in terms of copyright as well. Okay, so that's a very interesting question. Uh, that's something that everybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. So we kept it very simple. You know, we we the first thing that we tell the filmmaker is that this is your digital theater. Okay. Okay. Now, when you when you say the word theater, you know how the theater works. You know, any filmmaker goes and displays a film in the theater. Uh, there is a, a, a very clear-cut price bifurcations that happen. There is a, a particular component of the filmmaker, then the theater has its operating fees, and then its convenience fee, and then the tax, and that's how a ticket price works out, right? Mm. It, in our case, also, it works out exactly the same. You come, you fix your price. Now, when it comes to the operating cost, for any digital platform, the streaming cost and the storage cost and, you know, running the platform is its operating cost. Yeah. So depending on the length of the film, there is an operating cost that gets applied, which includes the storage, the conversion, the yeah. transaction, and the administrative fees or whatever you call it. So that's the second component. The third component is our own fee, which is 10% of what the filmmaker wishes to earn. So if you were saying, you know, you're going to charge $10 for the film, we would add $1 to it, but not deduct anything from your fee. And whatever the tax is going to get added, that's how the final ticket price comes out to be. Mm -hmm. And this is transparently displayed to you the moment you put in your uh, fee and your film duration. It shows up exactly how the whole work pricing is working out to be. Yeah, it's a uh, transparent uh, system. Um, it's just like a theater. Yeah, just like a theater. Yeah. Awesome. But um, how, do, how do you decide what movies go on the, and don't get on, as it were? Quality control then. Okay, so we are an open access platform. I would say in layman's term, we are the YouTube of films. Okay. So we don't restrict anyone. Yes, the only restriction is that it has to adhere to the local government guidelines. So if India has a particular set of guidelines, you need to be within those uh, guidelines. You know, no pornography or uh, super communally sensitive content or something like that. Mm. Uh, as long as you adhere to that, we are not going to restrict your film. Mm. no matter what quality or what it is. And that's what our value proposition is to yeah. upcoming filmmakers, mm -hmm. that this is a stepping stone for them to yeah. get into mainstream cinema. Okay, cool, cool. And who decides the price of the tickets then? So what, uh, the filmmaker decides his own price, whatever he wants to earn, mm -hmm. but we guide them on it because a lot of filmmakers tend to you know put in a price which is not practical. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they don't understand the pricing, you know, they don't understand the consumer sensitivity. They feel, okay, my film, I want, I have, you know, I want to make so much money. Let me price it at X price. But we tell them that, you know, you need to look at it, uh, from the consumer perspective, we guide them as to what the price could be, how they should set it. And the benefit that we provide to them is that you can have dynamic pricing. So, you know, you find that your film is really doing good. It's getting good response. You could gradually keep increasing your price. Mm. You know, start small because uh, you are on my platform because you were not able to sell your film to, you know, all those AT OTT platforms that you dreamt of. Mm. You know, you wanted to go to Amazon, you want to go to Netflix or even the smaller ones. They did not, you know, probably understand your film. They did not buy your film. And your option is now only to go to YouTube. Mm. And once you are on YouTube, you lost all your chances of, you know, going to any of those OTT platforms. Mm. So when you're here, uh, you know, why don't you start small and, you know, just keep increasing your fees. We are allowing you to do that. Let's go back to the start then. What kind of like research did you do? Interesting. We we actually did a research on, you know, what is, what is the amount of content, commercial content, film content, which is being produced in India. Mm. And it's very interesting. Mm. Uh, you'll also find it very interesting. In India, in a year, there are almost about 4,000 full length feature films being made wow okay and there is no data on the short films because short films has just come up you know in, in the last few years yeah. and there is no survey in terms of numbers but our estimates show that there is anywhere upwards of 10 to 12,000 short films that are made in a year across all the 16 you know uh, languages of the country I mean so in terms of languages we have more but 16 are the officially recognized languages and uh, more than 12,000 short films are made. But 
if you come to the main stream films which are like 4000 and uh, i'm sure you know that every friday films release in india yeah okay and on any given friday the number of films being released is not more than you know 4 5 if you put the original films together it's not more than 10 right now if you consider 52 fridays and 10 films on a particular friday you're not releasing more than 500 films in a year you can't and on, and, and on certain fridays if you have a blockbuster like i don't know if you heard this films rrr and kgf2 and the yeah. big names yeah big ones yeah yeah so nobody else releases on those fridays so you you have lost out for the next few weeks they don't release any films so effectively what we found out is not more than 350 films you know make it to the theaters mm. in india and another 500 films this 350 plus another 500 600 maybe 700 you know get bought by ott platforms directly yeah. you know they would pick it up so you are left with 3000 films who have nowhere to go what happens to them that's the question that came in uh, some of them do end up on youtube lot many do end up on youtube but uh, the good filmmakers whose films don't get sold they don't even give it on youtube because then you know they risk losing face because they lose reputation the moment you are on facebook people see you that okay maybe you're not a good director and you are forced to go on youtube yeah so they don't do it and those films uh, simply stay in the reels or the cans what we say is canned film in our terminology yeah uh, now if you put you consider at least the last 10 years you would have more than 30000 such films sitting somewhere that's where the idea you know started germinating if this kind of films want to go anywhere you know they want to put it on a reputable platform get presented like a proper ott unlike you know when you put it on youtube youtube does not categorize films it does not show you by language or yeah so here is a platform that allows you to work like a youtube you don't have any human intervention all you do is you go create your account upload your film and uh, it gets presented just like an ott platform the second data is of course you know if you are having content who's going to consume it and what we found is interestingly the regional content consumption market is almost 50% now in mm. india okay and it's growing yeah. so the demand for regional content is growing and especially the tier 2 tier 3 cities which have now you know good internet connectivity you know people who have nothing else to do are relying on this kind of entertainment content mm. so that's where we saw a very big market and that's where our concentration is to get you know more and more regional content on our platform mm. so so that that that's the two kind of, the study that we had done basically yeah yeah but what what went wrong in the early days then because obviously you told me that you have to like stop and start again Yes, so you know, when, uh, initially that team that we had in place uh, probably didn't understand that you know when you want to put up this kind of a platform, you need to think through everything, and you know it has to have uh, any good platform has to have stability in it. It has to perform at you know under various stress levels, and we uh, the team that was initially working simply didn't see that coming. Mm. So, you know, we had failures on multiple fronts, you know, people trying to upload films, they were not able to go through the way uh, the platform should interact with the filmmaker in terms of, you know, the ease of use, how does he fix his price and, you know, the structure and everything was, was simply not working for us. Mm. And it was a good learning in a way that, you know, it uh, actually, the, the failure allowed us to put a lot of things into a structured and processed approach and mm. also do deep thinking on it. In, uh, in a way, I, I would say we are blessed to have a failure, you know, early on rather than, you know, you have put in too much of efforts, you are already into the game for very long and then you see, you know, things falling apart and people losing faith in you. We, we were lucky that before people lost faith in us, we could bring it down and, you know, go about restructuring it. Mm. Put together a team which is really good now. And we got good reviews about our platform because uh, a lot of filmmakers finding it amazing that they can go and do the whole job themselves yeah, rather yeah. than, you know, talk to some, find out whom to talk to, then, you know, keep uh, following up whether his film is selected, not selected, have we seen your film? We have nothing like that. You know, you are a filmmaker, come simply create your account, verify it. 
you know, and put in your film and start earning money. That's about it. Can you remember the first time someone uploaded the movie and someone paid for a movie? How long did it take? <laughs> so it was very exciting. Uh, we we launched last February 26th and uh, in I think in the first few days itself, we got around four or five movies and a couple of views started coming in. And we were quite excited because, and uh, you know, a new platform getting such a response. It, it was like, you know, you're over the moon, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, we, we knew that, you know, this is an initial euphoria between, you know, people who've been eagerly waiting and you, the closer circle is basically the one which is responding right now. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, uh, the things are going to slow down. And that's the way it went. Uh, we had a first commercial film come in, you know, by luck in May 2021, mm. which again, you know, uh, as I told you, a lot of filmmakers have the apprehension that their film is the best and it's going to get the best of responses and everything. And that's what the filmmaker also came with that, you know, I have a full length film and I'm bringing it to your platform and, you know, you'll have 50, 60,000 views and money and this and that. So naturally, the excitement is at both the end that we're getting a first big film so early on, you know, when mm-hmm. the platform is not even known. The film came and, you know, it crashed. <laughs> but uh, then that was not, that that's something that did not deter us because we knew it's, it's, it's uh, you know, that, that that's the problem that the industry is facing. Everybody, every filmmaker comes with the mindset that, you know, my film is supposed to run, but that's not how it works. The best of the actors fail, you know, in their film. They 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 crash at the box office. Mm-hmm. So it it's likely the reality is catching up with the filmmakers. They are now understanding that it's not, you know, simply creating the film that works. There are a lot more things that get into it: marketing, reaching out, positioning, a lot of things that go into it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you have to accept the reality: what you're creating versus you know what the bigger uh, or what the audience is looking at and what choices that the audience has so why your film will work and not work you need to accept that reality and that's that's something which has happened over the past one year the one year the filmmakers that we've come across they they have a complete uh, you know uh, transformation in terms of how they are now looking at the market mm. how what what are their expectations they have become more realistic in their expectations they become more realistic in their approach that, okay, next time I'm going to produce a film, what am I going to take care of? You know, because uh, at the end of the day, no matter what I do, the reality is going to kick in after I've spent so much of money. Mm. So I might as well be careful at the start. Mm. So mm. that that is happening. And uh, more and more good quality filmmakers are now coming into the platform. Mm. Uh, off late, our quality of content has improved uh, substantially. Yeah. Earlier, because you are an open platform, you don't have users and all the good ones didn't just, you know, want to come to our platform. They, they preferred, okay, going to YouTube, uh, you know, not earning any money, but uh, they didn't want to come to our platform. Now they are looking at us yeah. because they realize that, you know, even after having, a, you know, 400,000 views or 500,000 views on YouTube, they could not even break even their production cost, forget right. the profits or... And that's a fact. That's yeah. a fact. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we came across at least seven to eight such cases where people had upwards of 100,000 views. I said, okay, fine, you have 100,000 views. What's your earning? This is not even 30% of my production cost or 20% of my production cost. I said, then what are you going to do? So he says, I have no option. I said, why don't you come to our platform? He says, really, what are you going to charge you? I said, we are not charging anything. It's free of cost. And that, that's what took them by surprise. But then that uh, the market is there, people want it. We are limited by our budgets, you know. We Being a startup, we don't have all that money to go and do that show mm-hmm. and pomp everywhere. Yeah. But we are getting into it slowly because we invested in the platform first. Yeah. There's no, no such platform available off the market shelf. We, we mm-hmm. spoke to a lot many uh, providers, you know, uh, who basically would provide me a platform for $2,000 a month. Mm-hmm. But not with such kind of features where, you know, you have channel partner system, you have a curation system, review system at the back. 
uh, you know you allow people to upload their own movies and fix their own price and all so so <clears throat> it took us a lot of time and investment uh, you know into the platform yeah yeah in terms of the business model and how how will you make money out of this then uh so we have multiple revenue streams the yep. first is as i said you know we have our convenience fee of 10% right so that's the first line the second is of course we will be running ads into the films mm-hmm. which will you know more than make up for the loss of revenue the third is uh, for us to reproduce a lot of content where we would you know be making money along with the filmmaker let me uh, the fourth is uh, selling helping them sell rights or sell outright to other ott platform okay. so that's where we would you know make money and there are okay when we came into this business there is one thing is we thought is uh, you know you just can't be another run of the mill ott platform uh, you need to have you know when you call yourself a startup you need to think about something more innovative startups are not you know a regular business can't be called a startup that's what i feel mm. uh, that's what my understanding is it's you know if i would if i were to open a grocery store next door i can't call it a startup mm. unless i'm doing something very innovative which no other grocery store in the neighborhood or you know in the city is doing yes then i am a startup so we also you know had the same thing that you know if we are calling ourselves a startup what is the unique thing that we are doing mm. okay we are giving the platform which nobody else is giving so we have you know two major disruptions planned which of course we are keeping it under the wraps but uh, in to you know put it straight we want to change the way people experience films you know at present uh, you look at any film if you are sitting in your home the maximum you can do is listen to it and you know see the visuals nothing more than it mm. we want to change that you know we want you to do a lot more with the film than you are doing today and lot more is like something which you haven't imagined as yet mm-hmm. so that's where we are getting into but that's a little longer uh, a little longer horizon and a little investment heavy tech that yeah. we need to do yeah sounds interesting so, yeah, interesting stuff yeah. um moving on what, what what's your background then tell, tell me a bit a little bit about yourself okay so i have a science background i am an undergraduate for the last 25 years i have been into a uh, creative communication industry i used to head a design and production okay studio based out of ahmedabad itself right as of date that studio is the biggest government content producer in the country oh wow yeah uh, i closely worked with the most happening person in the world as of date as yeah. of today mr narendra modi okay <laughs> Yeah, I was there with him in London also. Okay. Uh, twice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We well, did both the shows, the one in Wembley, Wembley and the yeah. one in Albert Hall. Yeah. Closely worked with him for twenty years, mm-hmm. uh, from two thousand one to twenty twenty before I stepped mm-hmm. down from the previous organization. What was he like then, on a personal level? Oh, uh, very inspiring. Mm-hmm. Uh, very uh, down to earth mm-hmm. because you know he might come across. from the media side as a shoot person but if you have sense in you you are talking sense he is the most down to earth person and he gives you the utmost respect because i can tell you from a few experiences you know uh, when i say 20 years because at that point of time i would be in my 30s yeah or my i say, rather i would say 20s not even 30s mm. and i had no fear talking to him All you know right. there's the the head of a state speaking to you and he would still uh, you know talk to you in the same language as he would talk to any subordinate kind of you know at the same level and give you the same level of respect and like you know just treating you like another child who is youngster with all the enthusiasm and does not know anything or is not serious about his business yet mm. and uh, he's explained whatever he wanted to say straight rather than you know tell his subordinates that you know go sit with them explain them everything give them the data or something he tells you what he wants mm-hmm. on your face and uh, in the most e- simplest way that you know you are able to convert what he wants into the audio visual that is looking for or the communication that is looking for and that's how we you know i'm i'm sure probably you've heard he's one of the best orators and uh, uh, you know the most uh, successful marketing guy that you would call <laughs> you know he's marketing himself well yeah 
and uh, we've learned a lot from him i've learned a lot from him i would say uh, being with him one on one uh, for a lot many hours as such mm-hmm. so that that's what my background is being into av production i have produced more than i would say 5000 films in the last 20 years short films of the ones with the government uses yeah. to promote most of its agenda part of some of the most iconic projects of the country mm-hmm. so right from the statue of unity which of course is a global icon now yeah. uh the where is that i've not, not been to i think my mom and dad have been there but whereabouts is that oh you were yeah you should have been there it's, yeah. it's quite near from the place you were i mean say a couple of hours of right. course but yeah it's it's a site to go right. i would say yeah, because I have, uh, I have to visit that yeah. yeah we i was involved right from the logo design to the launch of the statue mm. but what, what did uh, you think when it was first pitched then it looked like an impossible task uh you know we were just given a brief and a sketch of what it looked like and we were asked to do a complete av on it mm. and a brochure which was done overnight and uh, it was just announced before the elections all ah, right and then gradually the whole thing started shaking, taking shape and this went went saw through it and finally it's a reality today and it's amazing when you just, you are standing there uh, the monument uh, is very imposing on you mm. it is mm. so so i've been part of it the riverfront project in andabad a lot of national uh, programs that he has launched startup india or digital india or most of them we've been part of it what what what's, what's been the best day so far in your career then i've had many of them because being in a line which allows you to work with diverse industries so uh, you know one fine day we were told that you're supposed to fly in a couple of hours and uh, the brief is that you need to go and capture the discovery you know at high sea uh, you know we, uh, the gujarat state petroleum corporation which is a state owned company is mm. has discovered a large uh, reservoir of gas mm. uh, somewhere in the uh, bay of bengal and you know you have a couple of hours prepare yourself and you need to fly down and you need to capture the precise moment when the discovery happens all oh, right <laughs> and you just didn't know what how to go about <laughs> it and the next day you are you are you know you have been put on a fishing trawler whatever is available and you are on the high rough sea and uh, you're puking all the time you don't know how you really <laughs> going to make it through but that was that was learning and then the first discovery happened and then a, a second discovery happened a, a year or two later and we were told that okay this time around the head of the state will you know visit the platform the oil rig right in the middle of the sea and we want you to arrange a press conference from there <laughs> so <laughs> we just had to figure out how it's to be done that's mm. about it mm. and that so it was very challenging mm. and uh, you would not believe the only picture that i have uh, with uh, narendra modi is on uh, oil rig on the uh, you know helipad of a oil yeah. rig there i'm standing uh, with him that's about it <laughs> and uh, so that was one the other one was what one uh, in india what made him famous was the modi mask that was known mm. in 2007 elections is when used so it became quite a rage and uh, we didn't know anything we we are a creative agency not a manufacturing unit but one fine day we were called and said that you know uh, this mask is to be produced uh, somebody in china you know it will be produced in china but you need to give them the details and the measurements and everything and nobody knew how to take measurements for a mask <laughs> so we went about finding out learning it now that we had the measurement we said let's start you know let's explore what we can do with it and we started scouting we got a few people together and we did a sample and you know it got approved and there we were manufacturing the mask in india <laughs> and it just happened the and incidentally the indian masks were much better than the chinese one because the chinese really couldn't get the eyes right <laughs> okay <laughs> So that was that was something which happened different all of a sudden for us. Mm-hmm. A lot of big events that we did. Yeah. I, mean, so. I read your LinkedIn profile. It's really good. Uh, but on there, you put in never written my CV as I've never needed to apply anywhere. I don't intend to write one at least in the immediate future. I believe opportunity will find its way to me. Now that's quite interesting yep. because most people, you know, find go go and go out and explore opportunities. But you're saying, you know, 
up, I believe opportunities will find its way to me. That's what happened actually. Yeah. So when I joined this organization, uh, the earlier one that I used to head, uh, previous to that I used to run a training institute, and you know then I got married and I had to you know find something to really you know run the house. And I got introduced to my previous partner. Says go and work, just see what you can explore with him. And I started with a freelance marketing executive with that company, and uh, gradually you know they got some funding. They opened a division. I was asked to head the division from there. And then we had a bad time. We ran into almost bankruptcy. And at that point of time, I somehow took the opportunity, stepped in. And I asked them, you know, allow me to, if you trust, allow me to run it my way. Mm. And uh, then Narendra Modi happened at the same time. We got our first breakthrough into the government. And uh, there was no looking back. And twenty uh, years down, we are the biggest production house in the country as such for mm. you know government sector. So, when, so how, how did you sort of tradition tr- transition from what you're doing to being a CEO? Then, uh, to be very frank, I didn't know. Yeah. So during COVID, I did come up with a small social campaign called Mujme Bharat. It's still there. You might find it on uh, Facebook, and there is a website also that we put up. Yeah. Uh, the idea was to, you know, somehow get a confidence into people, into the economy and, you know, get that cycle rolling because mm. any economy uh, grows on money being, you know, rotated. So, uh, the idea was to ask people to go and spend rather than, you know, hold money and yeah. let everybody die. Just go out and spend, let everybody earn and that money is going to come back to you because your salaries are going to improve if your company has worked to do. So that that's a campaign that I ran at that point of time, and that's where I met my co-founder. Mm-hmm. He helped me with the PR and all. And then all of a, one day he said, "I have some small idea like this." I said, "Let's explore." Mm. And uh, that's where we took off. And initially, I was just, as I told you, you know, I was just supposed to consult him <laughs> as a return favor. Yeah. And uh, then it went on that you know. We spoke, we continued, we bonded more and more, more and more. And then I actually ended up as a founder along with him yeah, right. in the cool. company. Yeah. What, what so, we... you know, that's why you see the opportunity just came up. Right? Yeah. I never went finding for yeah. it. Yeah. What, what, what were your first impressions of him? I had worked with him in, uh, uh, in my earlier organization. Yeah. He used to work for one of the biggest event uh, companies in India. Ah, all right. Okay. So that's how I knew him. Mm. And he had also left the company and started his own organization. Mm-hmm. He had become an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And we just connected again. It's it's all by luck, you know. It happened. Well, the team then. Um, how big is the team now? Uh, we are a 10 people team. Yeah. And that's, I consider it as a positive because, you know, trying to manage a business like this with 10 people. Mm-hmm. But it's helping us keep ourselves afloat rather than, you know, uh, going into a situation where we need to lay off people or where we need to say that, you know, we are done with this business, let's close it. Mm. But having a small lean team is allowing us to, you know, keep our head above the water till, you know, we find that silver lining in the cloud. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it happened. We, we found an investor mm-hmm. uh, 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 from, you know, the family friend circle. Yeah. And we've been very grateful that, you know, he just came as a blessing. There was a time when we had run out of all funds and we would have had to call it a day. Yeah. And he happened. Uh, so we got an infusion of almost uh, 270,000 uh, USD. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it helped. Uh, it has helped us float the last 10 months and we will still be able to float a couple of more months. Uh, I think we will find some more investors by then. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so, so that's the, that's been our journey so far. Yeah, yeah. In terms of being a CEO, um, you know, le- your leadership, um, you know, what, what what does leadership mean to you then? Uh, very difficult question. <laughs> so I haven't really acted like a CEO. I, I don't know, you know, how do you put it in a term? I have, uh, so while I was a CEO at the old company also, I always uh, had a hands-on approach in terms of, you know, you don't just sit in the office and just take reports. <laughs> Been on the field, you know, uh, set through everything. And I feel that sometimes when you are there on the ground with your team, it does wonders. 
uh, you know just otherwise sitting in the you know air conditioned chamber and you know making phone calls or something you need to do it not that you don't need to and you just can't be everywhere and anywhere but uh, sometimes having the hands on approach works and as a ceo i found that more inspiring mm. uh we my pre- in my previous organization where i had more uh, experience or i would say as a tenure and learning as a ceo everybody used to be at the same level as such you know whether it's a it's a pune or it's a driver we all would be doing all kinds of jobs at some point of time and that's how we grew from a, you know i remember when i first entered into the company there were just about 10 people today that company is almost about 100 100 plus mm. people uh, you know different units working and kind of stuff so did you were you in, in charge of hiring people as then were you in charge of hiring people as well you know do you have any yes be- it was uh, uh, the hiring was like a joint yeah. exercise and so so do you have any like best practices in terms of hiring we were we are not a very corporate organization to be very uh, you know right. and so it was all on gut feeling you know you sit across the table talk to the person and uh, you know you take a call because uh, the kind of people we were looking for there is no formal education that you uh, had to check because you know whether it is from a science background whether it's from a commerce background or a finance background the work that we were doing was more of creative right uh, you know whether it's motion graphics or video editing and there are no such you know degree courses in india for this kind of jobs mm. you have for film making lot of job uh, yeah. you know courses but nothing on our line so it's purely based on you know the person's interest in editing a film and what's his background and what how does he understand visuals mm. you had to take your call so we did not have a very formal corporate kind of a process where you know you do a very detailed background check and you have a, a you know uh, while i spoke to a lot of hiring agencies they said you know you can have this service you can have this service uh, you know we do a profile check of the person we do a, a integrity check of the person we do you know so many services mm. we formally did not have those uh, kind of stuff basically mm. it, it was a straight one to one you talk to them give them a small project to do and if you found that okay uh, he has the capacity to learn and grow yeah he is hired mm. and a lot of people have grown and went on to build their own organization oh, that's good and that's that's a star that's something that we take pride in you know if yeah. you if you went out of our organization you were an entity on your own then let's talk about the movie industry uh, specifically in india then um what's it like now um after covid um is it healthy or is anything to change etc okay so two things have changed of course the production of films is back on track films are coming in and they're getting released and all but what has changed is the consumption you know earlier what was restricted to theater has now gone digital entirely so people have uh, accepted the concept of ott platforms a uh, lot of digital consumption has skyrocketed in fact if you look at the data that's available mm. but india being a price sensitive market that's where everybody is feeling the heat because unlike uh, you know the european and the american markets where you know you always are able to make your money out of subscriptions and all in india it's a difficult curve mm. netflix i think historically india is the only country where they have to reduce their subscription yeah. fees which is already 90% lower than the us <laughs> it is yeah <laughs> so so it's a very different market but the consumption has shot up like anything and given the cost of internet access in india being very low the per gb cost if you look even compared to your uh, your country it's peanuts i mean mm-hmm. say you know you so that that is changing the way i mean say reliance has changed the whole industry yeah. for good yeah yeah <laughs> definitely and spoiled the spoiled, yeah. country for good but it's it's increasing and uh, it has a huge potential as long as you are able to you know do innovative stuff mm. market size you just don't need to worry, worry about you know with 130 1.3 billion people yeah. you always going to find a market so yeah. if you know somebody is going to say give me a market size i would say in india if you are asking market size then probably you sh- shouldn't be in you know the business itself mm-hmm. so india india has a market for anything yeah given the volume yeah, yeah. what what does it mean for cinemas then 
Yeah, so is, is cinemas it, are now, yeah, cool. they, they, they opened up and uh, what I found surprising is uh, more and more are opening up uh, faster. All yeah, right. The, the, the theater chains have expansion plan and all. Yeah. But uh, there's nothing to worry about over there because India is already way below the international ratio right. of population to theaters. We, till 2020, 21 the official number of screens in India stood at around 8,500. Mm. Yeah. And in compared to US and China, our, our ratio was very, very, very poor. Mm. You know, China is a comparative country in population to India, but their ratio is much higher. Yeah. It is almost five times higher or maybe 10 times higher than India. Mm. Right. So we had, we had shortage of theater screens, mm. which is improving. But it is still going to be below, like, you know, uh, the number of screens and the population available. It's never be going to be able to cater to it. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, uh, capacity of people to spend, you know, not everyone will go and watch every film that's going to come into the theater. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. So, so the OTT market, the digital market is going to, you know, it's, it's still in the nascent stage, I would say. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, it, it has a long way to go in India. Yeah, long way to go on that one. Um, let's talk quickly. Talk movies. Uh, what are your favorite movies? Okay, uh, the Bollywood movies. Anything, anything. I have, I've liked a lot. So I, I, I've been liking action movies uh, from uh, the Hollywood, the James Bond ones, the Avenger series, and all. Mm -hmm. And in India, I, I, I love the uh, you know diversity. Right. So I. Uh, you know, I like the retro films mm -hmm. a lot. And then the new ones like RRR or KGF or, uh, you know, I, 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 see, being from this, I like all sorts of films. Horror is one thing which I am not able to watch. Right. But other than that, I, I can watch about any film. Okay. So, not, not I don't have any specific favorites. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like a pursuit of happiness is something that I really like. Okay. Will Smith. I, I, I have asked my children to see it also. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are, there are some of those kind of films. I can't recall all of them, but when I come across like the old ones, I don't know if you know the films, The Bridge on River Kwai, yeah. The Guns of Neveron. Yeah. Uh, so Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have somehow liked a lot of them. Mm -hmm. what, what 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 was the first movie you watched or you remember watching? The first movie that I remember watching, okay, when I didn't understand even films, like dad and mom would take me. I probably remember a James Bond film. Right. Way back, I'm saying, I'm talking about the 80s. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that is my, that's first. Then, then my uh, grandmom, and my granddad used to take me to watch regional cinema, mm -hmm. the one with the religious flavors in it, basically mythologically based films where mm -hmm. you had magical characters and all. I remember those. That those were the earliest uh, exposures that I had. Mm -hmm. any, yeah. any but movie? I don't remember the names of the films, so don't ask me that. Is there any, is there, is there any movie that made you cry? Lot of them. I even cry today. <laughs> okay. What, what, yeah, what was like, that? You know, the present times like Tare Zamipar, Chakde India. You know, those movements of victory, triumph, pain. Yeah, they do bring up. So, I'm, I feel happy because I'm able to fill the film. Because most of the people say, well, you know, why, what brings tears? Why should it bring? It's just a film. I said, if you're not feeling the film, why are you watching it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm able to fill the film. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say. And I am quite emotional. And in terms of making movies, surely, surely it's more competitive now that people can make a movie from a smartphone now. Are you, are you seeing yes. that on your platform then? Uh, so, as I said, you know, when we're looking at that disruption part, mm. we are probably going to completely bring up a new industry in filmmaking. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll be a completely new industry that will spring up. You know, the kind of directors that we need to produce those kind of disruptive films, mm. the kind of technology uh, developers who will think about such films. So, yes. Uh, you know, and and the best part is, as you rightly said, the cost of making a film is going down. Mm. So so we are not going to find you know difficulty or people with talent are not going to find difficulty you know getting into the industry. Yeah. Right. Earlier it was like you know if you even if you had the talent you never had the access to equipments and uh, the infrastructure because you know 
the kind of camera that you would need to produce a film and the amount of real content that you need you uh, probably a young person from a village even though he would have a good you know directorial talent he will never make it mm. now you just don't need to worry about that yeah cool true that awesome stuff um yeah final few questions uh advice for um our first time founders and entrepreneurs have faith in your idea you know be willing to uh, go through that patch which is definitely i mean say it happens to 99% of the startups uh, you know there's a point where you literally feel that it's over and that's where you have to cross over i mean the cross over in the sense you have to just stay afloat cross that particular point if you have faith in your idea just keep yourself afloat no matter what happens you don't find an investor you 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 know you are facing failure with the investor or dejection rejection whatever comes your way if you have faith survive it that's exactly what i'm doing i'm not saying you know my case is different i'm i'm actually going through that phase right now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where i'm not seeing you know too much happening on the platform uh you know not having the numbers that were you know envisaged early on but that that's the learning that is going to happen when you really put your you know foot on the ground or when you dirty your hands is when you really know what are the shortcomings or what are the difficulties or Uh, you know how much do you need to pivot yourself hmm. Hmm. but uh, you should you know uh, keep your head above the water and just sail through probably you'll find your uh, coming somewhere awesome stuff keeping the faith there um charlie barbara um thank you for coming on the show for more for if people want more information uh, what must they do you can reach me out on my email i am on linkedin i am on whatsapp whatsapp i won't prefer because it's a privacy thing but I'm uh, there on LinkedIn. Just reach out to me. I would be more than happy to connect with anybody who would like to know more about us. And of course, uh, platform. I would invite everyone to come and experience it because there is no cost to experience seeing the platform. We are giving initial credits to anybody who joins, mm. so he can you know just go and see a few films for free before he decides to even pay for any. It sounds exciting. That uh, Charlie Badra, thank you for coming to the show today. I really really enjoyed it, and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Neil, and I look forward to seeing you any day you are in India. Definitely, hundred percent. We'll go watch a few movies as well. Absolutely, I will be happy to take you around. <laughs> awesome stuff. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Yeah. Thanks to Shalini Barbara for coming on the show today. And for more information, check out abctalkies.com. Thank you for listening and supporting the podcast. If you're building something exciting, please send me an email: hello at neilpatel.co, or tweet at Indian Suspense H, or go to facebook.com/slash. Indian Start Show. Love to connect. Thank you and goodbye.